Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson. I'm back with another math video for you guys. Today we are looking at lesson 5.4, and in lesson 5.4, I'm going to share three strategies with you on how you can multiply using multiples of 10. Now, first things first, we want to make sure we understand what multiples of 10 are. So multiples of 10 would be numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You get the picture. So we're gonna look at three strategies. Strategy number one is we're gonna figure out how can we do, or how can we multiply multiples of 10 using modeling. Strategy number two, we're gonna be using a number line. And then strategy number three, we're going to use place value. And don't tell anybody, but when I show you that strategy, I'm also going to show you a handy little cheat trick that you can use to make your life a little bit easier. So. I got my whiteboard in front of me. I've got to turn the camera around so that I can do these examples for you guys. And then of course, I'm gonna close out the video and send you guys on your way. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so let's look at our first example. In our first example, we are being asked to multiply three times 30. 30 is our multiple of 10. So in this example, we are going to be using modeling. And to model, you wanna make sure you understand what pieces you need to use to represent your multiplication problem. So anytime you see this stick or this line, know that that represents tens. And anytime you, you see this small circle, that's gonna represent ones. And we're gonna use those to model this problem. So if I'm asked to multiply three times 30, but use modeling, or I choose to model how to solve that, I want to make sure that I understand that this is telling me that I need three groups of 30. So the first thing I need to do is going to look at my little sketches here and say, okay, well, if I need three groups of 30, I'm definitely going to use my tens pieces, but I don't need my ones pieces because there's no ones or there's no number or value in the ones place, I should say. So first things first, I am going to draw up my model. So group one is here, that's 10, 20, 30. That's group one, but I need three groups. I'm gonna draw my next group of 30. Here's another 10, 20, 30. That's two groups, but I need three, so I'm gonna draw one more group, 10, 20, 30. So now I have three groups of 30 and I need to use this model to tell myself what the product would be of three times 30. Well, I can just count by tens using my model. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So the product based on my model of three times 30 is going to be 90. So that's option one. Look at your problem, model it out. Your first factor is going to tell you how many groups you have, and your second factor is going to tell you how many do you need in each group. Once you've modeled that, you're gonna count how many you have in all, and that will end up being your product. All right, now we have the same problem, three times 30, but this time instead of modeling it, I'm choosing to use a number line. So the first thing that you wanna recognize when using a number line is how to interpret what the problem means you're going to do in relationship to a number line. So this means I need to make three jumps of 30 on my number line. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started by starting at zero. I'm gonna make my first jump of 30. So I'm gonna go start here, I'm gonna go 10, 20, 30, make a mark so I don't lose sight of where I'm gonna land on that first jump, done. Next jump, this is my second jump out of the three. 10, 20, 30, so I'm gonna land on 60 for that second jump. And then last jump, 10, 20, 30, make a mark there so I land in just the right spot. And then I'm done making marks on my number line. Now to represent the answer, you're gonna ask yourself, well, when I made those three jumps of 30 each, where did I end up? Where did I land on the number line? And you should see that you landed on the number 90, which is the exact same answer that we got when we chose to model our problem. So again, using a number line, you were able to see that the product of three times 30 is going to be 90, okay? So the next example I'm gonna show you, we're going to figure out, well, how do I use my place value to multiply a number by a multiple of 10? And that's where I'm gonna be a little sneaky and show you guys the cheat trick that works for me every time. 
All right, here we have our last example. And in this example, I'm gonna use a totally different set of factors. So in this example, we are going to be multiplying five times 30. Now, some people might panic and say, oh my goodness, I only know my facts of five up to 12. There's no way that I can multiply five times 30. That number is just too large. But what you do in this particular type of problem is you're just gonna look at your place value positions. And the best thing for you to do is to first See if you can identify a basic fact. And this is kind of where that little cheat trick comes in. So I always look for my basic fact. I know I'm gonna be multiplying by five. I'm gonna have five groups no matter what I do. But if I look at 30 really closely for just a brief moment, I can ignore that zero and just look at three so that I can create a basic fact. Now I'm multiplying five times three right now because I have three tens in total. That's where that three comes into play. I definitely know what five times three is. I know that five times three is 15. Now, I need to make sure that I understand that that doesn't mean that my answer is 15. This answer of 15 means I have 15 tens. And 15 tens, based on my knowledge of place value and how many tens are in 100, 15 tens means that I have 100 and five more tens, which also means that I have a total of 150. So five times 30 is actually 150 because I know that I will end up with 15 tens. And my rules of regrouping tell me that 15 tens is equal to 150 total. So we're gonna do one more example using the basic fact. Let's say this time you wanna multiply two times 40, okay? Again, you might be tempted to panic and say, I cannot multiply two times 40. 40 is too large of a factor for my mind to deal with. Don't be afraid. You're gonna say, okay, let me calm down. Let me look for my basic fact. I know that I'm gonna be multiplying two, and right now, I just wanna think of this as four tens instead of 40. That allows me to write the multiplication sentence as two times four, and that's super easy. That's eight, which means I have a total of eight tens, and I know that eight tens is the same thing as me saying 80. So that means two times 40 is going to be 80. Now, let me show you the cheat trick, and it's not really a cheat trick, it's really the same thing I've been showing you, but it's just kind of explained in a different way. Let's say we're doing five times 30 again, okay? We just did that one a minute ago. What you really can do is you can multiply five times three, that's 15, and you're gonna say how many zeros are left after that? There's one, so you add your zero. You still get the same answer. Five times 30 is gonna be 150. All right, now let me just show you very briefly that little cheat trick that I mentioned. And technically, it's not even really a cheat trick. It's the same thing that I just said to you when I went over the place value example, but it's just a quicker way to get there. Let's say that we were looking at three times 30 again. What you can do is you can just ignore the zero and say, okay, I know that three times three is nine. And then ask yourself, how many zeros are left after that? There's one, so I'm gonna add one zero, and I know that three times 30 is going to be nine. Let's do another one. This time, let's look at two times 40. Again, you're gonna ignore that zero. You're gonna multiply two times four, which is going to be eight. Ask yourself, were there any lonely zeros left over? There was. Tack that on to the end. You know that two times 40 is going to be 80. Let's do one more. Let's do um, five times 30, okay? Ignore the zero. Five times three is 15. Are there any zeros left over? Yep, there was one. I'm gonna tack that on to the end. Five times 30 is going to be 150. So those are your three examples. Let me go ahead and turn the camera around and give you some of those closing thoughts, and then that's it today. 
All right, so those are your three examples on how to multiply with multiples of 10 with three different strategies. We looked at modeling, we looked at using a number line, and we looked at using our place value. As always, these are three strategies that you will be able to choose from going forward, but you want to make sure that you are familiar with each in case you are asked specifically to use a number line or use place value or to model it. So I hope as always this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, please do give this video a thumbs up and I will continue to make them for you guys. Until then, have a great day and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye everybody.